Good afternoon and uh, welcome to my talk about Ansible and Aura. I have to constrain myself. Normally I keep running around and they ask me to stay within the perimeter. <laughs> so it could be that I'm not completely in place where I should be because I think I should be over there sometimes and over there sometimes. But we'll see how far we get, we, we get it done. Uh, this is a presentation about Ansible and Aura. Uh, Ara is a reporting tool for Ansible <coughs> that only reports things. Some people in the audience were asking me what Ara does. Ara is nothing more than a collector of Ansible playbook data and a web interface that can show you that data. Nothing more, nothing less. But first, the most important thing, who am I? Well, important, not, not that important, I guess. Uh, my name is Tom Kerste. I work as a Unix Linux consultant and trainer at AT Computing, a small firm in the eastern part of the Netherlands. We are one of the sponsors of this event and we also sponsor Lower Days. Be there. Nice conference and network in one and a half month. Uh, and I'm completely nuts about Unix and Linux and everything Unixy. And I've stopped using Windows in, I guess, 2002, something around that era. Uh, and I'm a configuration management addict. I've been using Puppet and Ansible uh, since the early beginnings of both of these tools. And I've been an Ansible contributor since 2012, even before the Ansible firm was, uh, was founded. Uh, and I'm a, well, a big fan of free and open source software. I don't like licensed things and things like that. If there is software, you must be able to use it, I think. I was hoping this thing will work. Uh, what is Aura? Aura is a, a tool that record, records everything that an Ansible playbook does. It stores the data in the database, and you end up with, an interf with a web interface where you are able to examine that data. And you can zoom in up to a task level, so you can see if a playbook runs successfully or if it fails, and if it fails for what host, what task, and what the reason was of that failure. <coughs> And one of the things that makes Ara wonderful is that Ara, in the early days, was nothing more than an, a plugin and a web server. So you had an Ansible plugin, a callback plugin that you needed to install, and <coughs> you had a, a web interface, so a managed server that you started written in, and I think it was Flask, I'm not quite sure, but it was a very small, tiny thing. So in the early days, the only thing you needed to do was pip install Aura, configure in the Ansible config file where the data should go, if it was a MySQL database or a SQLite database, and then run the command Aura manage run server, and then automatically a web server is started that listens on port 8080, connect with a web browser, and you get a picture like this. But well, now I run out of cyber. You get a picture like this, and as you can see, in this picture, there are a couple of hosts involved, and I've zoomed in for one of these pictures. No fails, yeah. couple skip, all the data that you see normally in an Ansible run. We implemented a, uh, this complete setup at a customer side, customer happy because he didn't want to have Tower or AWX because it's way too complicated for what he wanted. He only wanted a monitoring tool, how are my playbooks doing? But then we started upgrading stuff, and one of the things that needed upgrading, at least we thought it needed upgrading, was Aura, and that hell broke loose. Because the simple concept of Aura was ditched by the makers of Aura. Mm -hmm. They created a very, well, they, <coughs> they created a new uh, way of running uh, the, the complete Aura stack and everything that runs uh, below it. So when you run a playbook, there is a callback that sends uh, and saves data into a database. And there is a lot more stuff involved that, well, that supports you to get all the data in it. And this is only the back end. <laughs> and we run into a couple of problems. One of the problems is that for Aura, now you suddenly need Python 3.5 or better. So Python 3.6, 3.7 or even 3.8 now. But it is a problem if you are running on a uh, CentOS or a Red Hat Release 7 uh, distribution because there is no 
by default, no Python 3. You have to install it separately. But the Ansible that is installed uses Python 2.7. There are a couple of ways to solve this. And one of the ways would be to install Python 3.6. Of course, you need to have Python 3.6 or 3.5, well you need to install a Python 3, that's it. And then you can create a virtual env and run Ansible in the virtual env. This works. But there are little things behind the scenes that are not that nice when you're running this. And another way to do it is that you run Ansible from PyPy. So you install Python 3 and then you pip 3 install Ansible. But you have to make sure to remove the standard version. But the problems I think that are in this is that there are no automatic updates because you have to do that manual because it's front bit and there is absolutely no support by Red Hat. So if you have a license <coughs> for Ansible, the Ansible engine on your Red Hat system, this does not work for your support scheme. So you have to work around that. Another thing that you run into, and that's the biggest problem that you get is that they completely changed the front end. And the uh, older versions, you had the managed server and that ran as a separate process in your Unix system. But now they've changed it because of uh, performance issues so that you can now have the web server and the front end, you can have them separated. So when you now have ARA web, you need no JS. But you need a version of Node.js that's not available for Red Hat. Of course, a newer one. Probably, does the, uh, the, uh, the developer of ARA has a very new machine with all the newest stuff on it. But the problem is the end repository is way too old. You're on three, four versions off. A lot. So there's only one thing to do that, uh, to, to skip it and to fix it, is to install a new version from the internet but you have to make sure that it doesn't interfere with other stuff that already has a Node.js on the system. But you immediately end up again with no automatic updates, no support by Red Hat. And things get worse. Because you think I can, I can just start it up and it works. Well, it doesn't. Because in the first thing, when you start it, you don't get any connection to your database, even if it's an SQLite database. <coughs> then you start searching the internet. Because in the documentation, which is flaky at best, uh, there is nothing about not connecting. So you search the internet, and then you find somewhere in, on page seven or eight of Google, uh, you find that you need a whitelist in the config. So in the configuration of the Node.js, you need to allow the current server to attach to the, uh, to the front end. Well, when that is fixed, you automatically get into an access denied error. You already can imagine this is no fun. Uh, and then you start searching again in the flaky documentation, and this is not documented. Then you search on the internet, nothing there. At least I couldn't find it anything, and I was already searching in page 20, 25 of Google. So if it's not there, then it probably doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, on Freenode, there is an IRC channel for ARA. So I started my, uh, my pigeon uh, client and started chatting on the IRC. And then somebody came up with, yeah, but you don't have to allow local host, that doesn't work. You need to allow the IP address of the local host. So the IP address of the interface that connects to the internet. So in this case, that should be, well, something in that range, 192.168 or whatever. I still think, it, I consider this a bug because everything is on the same machine, mm -hmm. so I should be able to connect through local host. But it didn't work, I had to do that. And as soon as you've got that running, you end up with something like this. No table playbooks. You would, um, uh, Assume that if you install a tool like this and you run it for the first time, it automatically checks if the database is valid, and if it's not, it will create the database scheme for you. Well, bad luck, it doesn't do that, because if you install the complete ARA setup, 
it does not automatically create a database for you. In the documentation, <coughs> there's nothing that you need to do a creation of the database. So that's not documented. It's not on the internet. And I finally ended up on IRC again, chatting, I think, to one of the uh, of the developers of our, I'm not quite sure, but I think it was one. And he said, yeah, but you need to migrate the database. Migrate from where to where. What they mean is that you need to run a command that does a migration of the database and that checks if the database exists and if it doesn't, it creates one. That's exactly what I think when I do a migration. Because I enter no data. Well, after I've done everything to get this running, I ended up with uh, a list of steps that I needed. And these steps that I needed were these. I had to install Python 3. And then I installed Ansible through PIP3. I could have done a virtual end, but I ran into a couple of problems uh, with that. So I tried it this way, and this way worked. I could have done the other way and keep searching and searching, but I didn't do that. Uh, then I installed the ARA server. Then installed Node PM because there are some commands in there that I, already, that I need before everything else uh, is installed. Uh, I need to install Django. Then I have to configure the ARA server. Then I have to migrate the ARA server. Oh, but that only is valid when you're running it on SQL Lite. But because this is in a very small environment, 20, 30 hosts, it's well absolutely valid to run it on an SQL Lite, Lite database. There's no need for uh, my SQL setup. Then I install Node.js from the internet. And when, when, when that is done, I clone the ARA web from GitHub. And then I've got the newest version. As you can see, it's a lot of work to get something well, quite small, up and running. And then you have to do an npm install, npm audit, fix, npm update. I'm not quite sure why, but if, if I don't do them all three in that order, it doesn't work. I'm not quite sure why, because I'm not a node specialist. I just run commands on node, not knowing what I'm doing. Then I have to configure some shell settings, because some things are not installed in the default locations. So some things are installed in user local bin. And if you install Ansible through PIP3 and ARA through PIP3, Ansible is not able to find the ARA plugin because it's in user local and then somewhere below that. And Ansible <coughs> thinks it should be in user lib and somewhere <coughs> behind there. <coughs> so you have to set some configuration settings, configure shell settings so that you have a valid path and that Ansible knows where to find all the plugins. And once you have done that, you can start the ARA server and the ARA web. If you want to use ARA and you don't want to go through all the hassle, which I can imagine, because ARA is a wonderful tool, but well, the change of the interface and the change of the thing doesn't make anything uh, more convenient. Uh, I created an example script that does, in fact, what this says. And that script is available on my website and then files, and the script is called Make ARA. Does nothing more than pull all the stuff from the internet, installs everything, installs Python if it needs to. And then, well, that's about what it does. And then you've got the web interface, which looks like this. They change the, the, the look and feel a little bit. And there are a, little, a couple of little bugs in there, that at least that I consider bugs. One of them is this. Not a number. And I've tried everything to get that fixed, but I can't find where it is. There is somewhere in the database that, uh, that is checked for this field. And the value that's in there seems <coughs> not to be a valid number. I don't know why. Uh, and one of the things that I kept running into, and I'm not quite sure if you can see what's happening, but this is the oldest one. And this is the one newer, and one newer, and so on. And one of the things that I ran into is that I kept thinking, why aren't there any records in here? Because I assumed, because the old one did that, that the newest one would be on top. And unluckily, there is no way to change the order. The order is always, well, now I, I think that this web interface will be improved on, upon in the next couple of months. But one of the things well, that really 
well, annoys me is the fact that I think this is upside down. I want the newest on top and I want auto refresh, if it's possible. And you can absolutely see there's more, more work involved in here because <coughs> one of the things that needs to be done is, uh, with a bit of luck, I've got a working version. Uh, if you look at these, well, these blobs of Ansible playbook runs, it turns out that it's not possible to dive as deep in to the Ansible results as before. So there's not completely, well, I think it's not done yet. But the old version is hardly available anymore. So that's a big problem, I think. With a bit of luck, this is the web server running. Uh, well, that no, nothing happens, of course, because nothing, nobody is connecting to the thing. And here, you can see I've got uh, three virtual machines running, one with Ansible on it and ARA on it. Uh, and the ARA uh, collector is running. Uh, and there is a playbook that runs every five minutes, which normally is absolutely ridiculous, but just for demos purposes, it runs. As, and as you can see, there are a lot of tasks, and all, most of them are patch and post and patch and post. But they deliver the data. And I've already had, what, where is it? <coughs> this is the live web interface. And as you can see, on December 19, I installed this thing to find out what happened. Well, let's give it a refresh and see if it... Well, you see, December 19 is still the newest. And there's also live in a live environment still no available uh, a number for here. If we scroll <coughs> down, we've got February 4th, I think. Three, four. I guess four. And as you can see, 1515 GMT. So that's a good one. So that should be the time in England. And now we can try to zoom in on one of them. As you can see, you can see something. The, it, it's not as detailed as the old version, but I think that will come back in here. Uh, so there, there should be a point when D2 are equal. Uh, And this gives you quite a nice overview. One of the strange things is here, here at this point it knows what timing it was. And in the main interface it doesn't. So I think that's very strange. There should be an error somewhere in that. Uh, and one of the things is that, well, you can, can zoom in, but not as deep as you would. You cannot find, well, not up till the playbook level as you could before, which I think is a shame for now. But in fact, you have a, a version that works. It, only should have the newest on top, or the possibility to change the order, and it should have uh, an auto refresh. I, I see some people are leaving. That's not that bad because I'm I'm way way faster than I thought I would be. So I end up here. If there are any questions, I'm happy, happy to, to answer them. Uh, I will put these slides on speaker deck. Yeah, um, uh, if, if, uh, my, uh, um, I mean, uh, why didn't, did you not try to package the missing dependencies for your, like, uh, Ansible, uh, or maybe find a RPM uh, in Apple or, and install in your system? Uh, the, the, the question is, why didn't I package or find an RPM myself? Well, one of the things that you run into, for instance, for Node.js, there is no valid RPM new enough for CentOS or Red Hat 7. So what you need to do is you need to download the Node.js uh, binary. <coughs> well, it's a tar file with binaries in there. <coughs> if you, if you can just unzip that, untar it somewhere in the directory, and then you've got a working environment. That's not that hard to do. Uh, and the other things that you miss are all Python 3. Uh, well, there is a package for Ansible, which is in pip. There is a package for ARA, which is in pip. So there is no need to create your own packages. The only thing you need to do is install Python 3, install through pip Ansible, <coughs> and install Ansible ARA, and the ARA web server. But they're all, it's, it's already completely packaged. So there's no need to do that yourself. 
Can you sorry. have you written a Mansfield playbook for installing or only bash script? Sorry? Can you you mentioned you that you've written uh, something for installing ARA? For oh yeah, yeah, on the yeah. one of the previous <coughs> slides. Yes? Yeah. That one. Is it a bash script or Ansible ROM? Uh, in this case, uh, the question is what the, uh, what the script is. Uh, in this case, it's a bash script. Why not Ansible? Yeah, could have been, but then I get a chicken egg problem because I need Ansible to install Ansible. Why not? Yeah, it could it could be, and that, that Ansible removed the old Ansible in a second playbook. Yeah, that, that could be done, but I think, well, creating a bash script, yeah, why not? I mean, because you need to insert variables at some point, and then you all automatically end up using Jinja 2 templates, and this was easier and quicker. And I think that was my main problem. I needed to get it up and running again because it was at the customer side. Yeah, coming back to the bash instead of configuration management. Yes, absolutely. There was a talk uh, yesterday coming back to bash. Everything ends up with a bash script again. And today, the same speech. I was today the same one. Or, or was it? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I've seen so many, I'm not quite sure when it Yes? Nice. Thank you.